Hello, I'm Daniel, and today we're going to show you how to best manage large complex projects with multiple PCVAs using AllSpice. So uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the traditional Git repo, uh, where you can have a single repo that manages your files, but if you have multiple PCVAs um, or other files such as uh, schematics or test procedures, manufacturing information, Gerbers, drill files, assembly instructions, test firmware, basically anything that's part of a product lifecycle management, a PLM system uh, that's used to determine and, and fix a project to, to its form, fit, and function for a particular revision, you can use those files in a submodule. So today what we're going to do is show you an example um, here on the repo, and then we're going to recreate it from scratch. So here we have SBC test station. Uh, this is the example of what it will look like when it's finished. You can see that we have uh, links here to other repos. Uh, normally in a repo you'd see a folder and you click through there and those files are inside that repo. But here these are actually links to another repo. This is the submodule feature that we're using. If you click here on single board computer you can see that it now links to up here in the URL single board computer. We're no longer in the same repo. The files are changed and maintained over here um, and they are separate from the changes in the repo that we are creating. Uh, you can also see that each of these uh, files, each of these links here includes a SHA1 hash. And if you click on that, it will show you the specific uh, commit revision of the files that you want. So this allows uh, you to, people in your organization to keep working, keep revisioning. Um, you could have you know, 20 different revisions later and you'll still be uh, linking to this specific version. So, and that's a feature that's necessary in PLM systems. So let's go back here. Um, and if we look at our local version of this, we have a folder here called SBC test station. And it also includes these files. If you click through them, uh, the difference here on the local version is that these files are, the copies of the files are here, um, as opposed to in the, uh, on the website, the, on the remote branch, the, uh, the files are actually linked. You know, it's, it's a, it's a simulated link. So we're going to click back here up into the main folder. And it's, uh, we have a folder for each of these three components. Uh, one is the computer. Um, this is, uh, the product that we're going to be shipping. Um, I'll show you over here on the website. So we have a single board computer. This is an Arduino Uno R3 clone that we're using. This is the product that we're shipping. Then we have an additional file, the single board computer test fixture. This is a board that sits on top of the DUT, the device under test that we're shipping. And this allows us to connect in and uh, loop back some signals and read some values in and verify that the circuit board was assembled the way that we wanted to. And the third file is the single board computer test software. And this includes just a single file. This is an Arduino program, um, but it could be a C file. Uh, you know, it could be any, any language that you want. Um, and this is the software that we're going to be using to test the device under test. And this is just a simple loop back program. What it does is it reads the analog channels from the uh, anal uh, from the Arduino clone and uh, uh, sends the values back on the serial uh, port so we can do a little bit of manual inspection of the board. Going back to the local file, you can see that each of these three things are here, the single board computer, the test fixture, and the test fixture software, as well as a couple of other files that we'll go through as we create it. So uh, let's take this folder and I'm going to rename it to SPC test station old. No, oh, I already have one of those. SPC test station folder. Uh, oh, okay. It's uh, the file is open in a program right now. So it's currently open in VS Code. So I'm going to close VS Code. <coughs> There we go. And now we're going to go to the uh, original repo. We're going to delete this repo. This is an example of what it's going to look like. Now let's delete it so we can show you how. 
and click on settings and scroll all the way down to delete this repository. Don't do this to your repo unless you want the files to be gone. There we go. So let's go back to the dashboard. So now what we do is we want to create a brand new repo. You're going to go up in the upper right corner here and click the create button. Click on the new repository and give it a name and call it SBC test station. Then this is going to be a test station for the single board computer Arduino R3 Quad. Going to use the uh, default issue labels, uh, the default git ignore, clicking on advanced settings, uh, not filling out the license, but we are having the default readme. We're going to initialize the readme, uh, repository with a git ignore license and readme file. It won't give us a license because we don't have one up here. Uh, the default branch is main, and we're going to use the default trust model. And this is not a template. We're going to click Create Repository. So what this does is on Allspice, it creates uh, Allspice Hub. It creates a uh, a blank and empty repo on main. And now what we're going to do is we're going to clone this locally to our file system so that we can start uh, merging in, uh, start bringing in the submodules. So. There's two ways, uh, two different links that you can use depending on uh, whether you've uploaded a key. If you've done that, you can use the SSH link here, um, but we're going to wind up using the HTTPS link, and this uses your login authentication, the same thing that you use to log into Allspice. Uh, this uh, uh, it uses the same authentication to um, make sure that uh, you are the one who's uh, sending the files. Uh, so let's grab that. We've copied the link. Um, now in the folder that we want to create, I've got create a folder here called git sandbox. I'm going to right click in here and we're going to use the tortoise git command uh, inside the context menu. So we're going to click git clone. And although most of the time the software is pretty good about copying exactly what you have in the clipboard, I think it's a good idea to paste it every time because uh, sometimes it does get stuck on a previous value. And I think it's also a good idea to click down into this next value because sometimes that uh, doesn't update. So now we have SBC test station .get and our URL. We've got a directory. We've got it exactly cloning exactly where we want to go. Click OK. And after a couple of seconds, it's going to show you all the uh, success messages. So we're going to hit close. So let's go into SBC test station. You should see we have a readme file. It's the same readme file that we created in the git folder here. So the next step that we want to do is we're currently on the main branch and we don't want to develop on main. So let's right click. We're going to select tortoise git here and then dive into the submenu, switch checkout. And we're going to change the branch to develop. And click OK. So it should be pretty fast. There's no files in there. Uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, if you have a project that's further along and your develop branch is different than your main branch, then you're going to want to click merge. Um, I'm going to simulate that or go through that right now. So we're going to merge from main. Now this, because the project is brand new, isn't going to show us anything or isn't going to move any files because the, the, two, the two branches should be identical. So yep, already up to date. <clears throat> and so now if we right click in here, we can see that we are now in the develop branch and we're uh, ready to start making changes. So let's, uh, let's start cloning, uh, uh, let's start um, using the submodule add uh, feature here, but we need to grab the URLs. We need to grab the links to those projects. So the first one we want is single board computer. You click in here. Uh, we're on the main branch, which is good. HTTPS copy that link. All right, so we're going to right click in here, tortoise git, uh, submodule add. Okay, and you can see here that it is, uh, this value is, is set to a previous value that I've been using before. You want to be watch out for that. Sometimes the copy, sometimes it'll, it'll bring, bring out what's in the, the clipboard and sometimes it won't. So we're going to paste that in here. And the next thing you want to do is you see how this value is different than the, the path value. You want to click down into the path value so it'll 
automatically update that. Single board computer, single board computer. There we go. We're going to click OK. And you can show what it's doing is it's cloning that, uh, that repo in as a separate module. We'll hit close. And see here, the files are right there. Single board computer. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code, VS Code. You can use any text editor that you want. And it's going to show you, here's the, the readme file that we have. And then here we have this new file that it automatically creates called the .get modules file. You can see here it's got the name of the repo, it's got the path. So this is the file folder. You can see it right here inside the file browser, single board computer. It's got all of our files right here, just like we wanted. And it's got a URL to the repo. Um, what it doesn't do is it doesn't show you uh, at this level what, uh, which specific version you're using. Um, if you do want to get into dive deep into that, you can copy this and search inside the project. And you can see all the places inside the project where it's, uh, where it's actually changed the files. Uh, so these are all inside the .get directory, um, something you usually don't have to look at. Um, but it shows you in the remote origin, if you scroll back here, this shows you the SHA1 hash for that specific version. So this allows your PCBs to keep on revisioning. And uh, this, this repo that has this submodule in it will only ever point to this specific version. So it doesn't matter if you wind up making changes um, later on. It's until you pull new changes from, uh, from the system, it's, it's going to use this. Uh, so again, let's, let's close this. Let's go back to the uh, file explorer. Get out of get. <clears throat> so we have one of the folders here, the single board computer. Let's add the other two. We're going to go back to Allspice and click here. Next thing we need is we're going to have the test fixture. So let's click on the test fixture. Make sure we're on branch main. HTTPS here. and We're going to copy the link. We're going to repeat the process here inside SBC test station. So I'm right clicking, clicking on tortoise get, submodule add. And let's paste the link. There we go. Test fixture. Click onto the next one or tab in. Um, single board computer test fixture. Single board computer test fixture. You know, it's do whatever method you need to to, to verify. I like saying it out loud. Um, let's click OK. And just like the previous version, it's going to clone those into the repo. And if we check the readme or the git modules file, you can now see that there's a second. Um, Second thing here. So uh, the main PCBA that we're shipping, the device under test and the test fixture are great, but it would be even better if we included the test software so that we have the specific revision of test software so we can ship our product when we need to. So let's add that. Single board test computer software. Let's click on that repo. Again, branch main, HTTPS, and copy that. We are back at our SBC test station folder. We're going to right click, tortoise git, and we're going to submodule add. Same command. Let's paste that value in there. Click on here. It updates. So we have the software. Uh, let's click OK. And within a couple of seconds, it should clone all of those files. We're going to do one final verification in here. Yep. Here we, we see the git modules file. It's now added the single board computer test software. Uh, let's add the readme uh, in here. Uh, let's say includes test device under test dot uh, test fixture. Test software. There we go. So we've got an updated README. Um, so the next thing we need to do is these files are only local. Git is local. So we're going to commit these changes to the development branch. So we're going to right click inside the folder. Uh, git commit. Develop is the command that we want. We're going to add a meaningful message. Added dot test fixture and test software. 
The other thing you want to do is go inside the changes made and just double check that it's got the folders that you wanted to add as well as the readme file uh, and that it has not included any files that you don't want to. It's, uh, it's always good to check your uh, commit changes. So we're going to click on commit. And there we go. Everything is commit locally. Um, next thing we need to do is push it to the server. You can either push right here, but I'll show you the, uh, the longer way of doing it. So we're going to right click, and if we go into tortoise get, we can push. Let's click on the push command. And it shows us the branches, and we want to double check that we're working in develop and develop. And the origin, yep. We're going to click on OK. So we've commit the changes locally. We're now pushing the changes. All right. So the next step we're going to do is take a look at the files on the development branch. So here, here we go. We've got the SBC test station that we created. And we're on branch main, and it does not include the changes that we created, as it shouldn't. So I'm going to click over to the develop branch. And lo and behold, we have our links to the specific uh, submodules as we wanted, as well as our updated uh, readme file here. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to take this branch and uh, merge it into, or not merge it, we're going to, yeah, merge it into the, uh, the main branch using a design review. Uh, you might know this is a pull request, but in hardware, design review makes more sense. So we're going to click new design review. Um, and this has automatically selected our um, pulling from develop, but sometimes it's set to main and main. Um, so you have to make sure that you're pulling from and merging into the correct uh, versions that you want. So the next thing you could do is you can review all the changes. You can see here in Git modules, we've added these, uh, we've added the submodules and the links to the repos. Um, we've got changes here for our readme file. And then in these links, it shows the subproject commit um, and it shows the specific SHA1 hash to the uh, version of the repo that we want. And uh, now and before you finish the design review is when you would check these and say, yes, this is indeed the, the, the version of the files that we want. So let's click on new design review. Uh, added dot test fixture in software. I think that grabs it from the last commit message. Um, into integrated final assembly. Uh, create design review. Now here is where you can also add uh, assignees and participants uh, to streamline the tutorial. I'm going to be the only one who's reviewing it. Uh, let's write a comment. Um, reviewed version for accuracy. We're going to comment in there. Anyone else who's participating in the design review can keep uh, commenting until um, if the, the project is ready to be merged. And then once everyone is approved, you can click on merge files here. So reviewed, uh -huh. here's the name of the particular pull, uh, pull request, pull request one. And we're just going to say double check the repo versions, and then click merge files. And then voila, it shows us a history of everything that we did and shows us the versions. You can go through here and, and check to see after the fact that everything was done correctly. Undo mistakes if you needed to, but um, right here we should be good. Let's click on the SBC test station. We're in branch main and it now includes the submodules. So I hope that you, today you learned, we, we were hoping to show you how to organize multiple repos for a more complex uh, upper level assembly uh, and how to do that in uh, Allspice.